Diablo 1 and 2 were for their time, some of the greatest games ever made. Both games earned Game of the Year nods, so it's no surprise that the next game in the series, Diablo 3, was one of the best-selling games ever. So how was Diablo and its fans done dirty? Let's get into it. Diablo was such a beloved franchise, and yet now, gamers don't have the same love for it that they used to. Fans like to harken back to where they saw the series first go wrong. And if you know anything about Diablo, you guessed right, the majority of fingers point at Diablo 3. First off, Diablo 3 was not created by the team that made Diablo 1 and 2. Those games were made by Blizzard North. Although Blizzard North started working on a second expansion for Diablo 2, as well as beginning work on Diablo 3, at that time, Blizzard North was engaged in arguments with Blizzard's parent company, which led to several key members leaving their roles and eventually the entire Blizzard North studio closing down. Fool! You have just ensured the doom of this world. You cannot even begin to imagine what you've set in motion this day. Eventually, development on Diablo 3 was restarted by Blizzard and was led by Jay Wilson. Once announced, hype for Diablo 3 was off the charts. Diablo 3 was ranked the number 5 Google search that year. Fans of the series could not wait to get their hands on it. When the game launched in 2012, millions of players tried to log in at the same time, which led to overloaded servers. Most players received the infamous error message, Error 37. Error 37 was a rough start to the Diablo 3 launch, but game journalist scores were strong and the game broke PC gaming sales records. You would think that once players could log in it would be smooth sailing from there. Unfortunately, there were a few more problems Diablo 3 players were about to find out. The next drawback was Inferno mode. When you get to Inferno, you just have a whole new set of challenges. That first rare monster pack is basically going to own you. You really have to watch your defensive stats. Yeah. And at the same time, you're trying to build up your magic find. and It's hard because you have to, it's a fine balance. You're going to really need to use your gems and your enchants to really boost up your defense just to survive and not get one-shotted. When you get to Nightmare and Hell and Inferno, you will get your asses kicked. We promise. The end game difficulty was called Inferno. It was so difficult that you needed to use some of the best gear in the game. The problem was that this gear only dropped in Inferno mode, which created a chicken and egg scenario. The solution was to play the game improperly. Avoid monsters, open chests, avoid monsters, open chests, etc. It was much more beneficial to run away from enemies because of how long it took to defeat them. And it was more efficient to find items by just looking for treasure chests. The next problem was that you almost never found legendary items. These were the best items in the game and it sometimes took over 100 hours to find your first one. When you finally found one, it could be for a different character class, making it unusable. This brings me to arguably the biggest problem of all, the auction house. The farming industry is already looking at Diablo and going, how can we make some more money? With, with there being a monetary aspect tied to the game via the auction hall now, my question is around the botting. Hey, my question is about the real money auction house. With the uh, implementation of using PayPal to buy items, I am curious what effects you think that might have, if any. Uh, we don't feel it's going to be a big problem in Diablo. The auction house was a place where you could spend in-game gold and real money on items that other players were selling. Defeating enemies was now the least efficient way to find better gear, and the Diablo series became more pay-to-win than it ever had been. So there's no point in playing a game, Blister. If I can just spin forward on nine. The last Diablo 3 flaw that I want to bring up was that there was no PvP. Many Diablo 2 players played mainly for the purpose of dueling with their friends or other players from around the world. <laughs> someone just died! <laughs> I just one shot at someone. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, see how we do. Basically, I shouldn't be getting hit. Let's see if we can actually kill. When PvP finally launched, it felt broken and imbalanced. Okay, we killed someone. Oh, by the way, they can't actually hit me. And oh, and one more thing, not a huge flaw, but an honorable mention, is that Deckard Cain is killed by a butterfly. How salty are you if he died in Diablo 3? <laughs> uh, I, I think it sucks. 
you know, I, I, I love that character too, and uh, you know, it's a shame that they went that way. But you know, I have no real influence or control over any of that, and they're going to do what they want to do. And uh, you know, I, I was sad to see him go. That's the way it is. One important thing to mention about Diablo 3, before I move on, is that the developers addressed a bunch of these issues themselves, and with the Reaper of Souls expansion and Loot 2.0. A much higher portion of the player base enjoys this game, as opposed to Diablo 3. That brings us to the next time Diablo fans were done dirty, BlizzCon 2018. This scenario felt all too familiar. For months leading up to BlizzCon, Blizzard had been talking about multiple Diablo projects in development. With BlizzCon just around the corner, fans were speculating that a Diablo 4 announcement was coming. When the day finally came, the Diablo developers shocked the world. They did not announce Diablo 4 or even a Diablo remaster. Instead, they announced a mobile game. Hey, uh, just was wondering, is this uh, an out-of-season April Fool's joke? Uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's a fully, uh, fully fledged uh, Diablo experience on, on mobile. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any? Uh, yeah, th this the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. To set the record straight, there's nothing wrong with announcing a Diablo mobile game unless it is done on the main stage at BlizzCon in front of a bunch of hardcore PC gamers with them thinking they would get a much superior announcement. We have to help him! He's dead already. As awesome as the Diablo series was, it is difficult to get height for the next release in this series Diablo 4 has now been announced but with a ton of key developers gone, the lawsuits Blizzard is facing, and the recent poor track record of Blizzard's recent history. It will be tough for the Diablo series to regain its former glory. Even so, I will be giving Diablo 4 the old college try, because a part of me will always remember how awesome slaying demons once was. Now, I know what you're thinking. What happened to Diablo 4? Oh. Ah! 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 